Welcome back to another episode of Inside Access Control, sponsored by SIA. Uh, very excited today to have a handful of people, on, and I'll have them introduce themselves as we go into this. But um, Bill Edwards, uh, Bill and I caught up a couple of weeks ago at this point now, and uh, gave me a great uh, overview and demo of something that we've been talking about around getting people back to spaces safely. Um, so uh, I thought it'd be great to have Bill and team join. And, and give us a little bit of a, you, uh, an overview of an actual uh, solution solving a problem instead of just theoretical conversations about what, what's happening in the marketplace. So with that, Bill, thank you. And, and thank you, Anna and Jeffrey, for taking the time to join and look forward to digging into this. So please, Bill, kick us off with uh, who you are and, and the team, and then we'll, we'll dive into what you all are doing. Yeah, great. Thanks, Lee. So uh, Bill Edwards, I'm with Thornton Tomasetti. I'm a security and safety consultant for the firm. And and what we've done uh, with this, this solution we've brought, we're bringing to market is, is to support, um, you know, safe reentry to public space um, and also provide a litany of capabilities under, under a technical solution to do that for, for a myriad of, of venues, uh, sports venues, cultural institutions, healthcare, higher ed. Uh, we can go almost anywhere with this with this uh, technical solution and, and who and my partners on on the uh, uh, on the podcast today with me are Anna Scott and, and, and Jeff Weaver, Anna from Intel Corporation and Jeff from HPE Aruba. And so before we get any further into the technical details, I'll, I'll turn it over to Anna for a quick introduction and then to Jeff. Fantastic. So I'm Anna Scott. I, I as uh, Bill was saying, I work at Intel. I am part of our public sector team. Uh, we are primarily focused on really working with uh, state and local governments, uh, but we do a lot with the universities. We do a lot with the federal government, um, a lot with the state governments as well. Uh, we are, as a company, very heavily invested in really trying to figure out ways to use technology to deal with the difficult situation we find ourselves in today. And so Intel is just delighted to have this opportunity to work with, um, with HPE Aruba and with Thornton Tomasetti to really uh, bring a new solution to market that can really leverage technology in a way that does help people uh, stay safer and minimize their risk and get them back into uh, 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 the, well, better way to say it would be give them the ability to get back to do the things that they love doing and congregate with, uh, with more than just a handful of folks. So thanks for the opportunity to join today. Absolutely. Thank you for doing it. So Jeffrey. Yeah, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Jeff Weaver. I'm the director of public network consulting at Aruba, which is an HPE company. Uh, and I, I typically work on uh, stadiums, arenas, those kinds of venues. Uh, theme parks are also interesting at this point. And and it, as you as we get into the conversation here, I think you'll see that the technology that we're going to, to show you is um, it's existing technology. We're we're repurposing it, but it has just as much interest on. Um, to our enterprise clients, uh, kind of anything with a perimeter. So you'll hear us talk a lot today about how we can use that technology in public venues, but um, I think you can also understand it's uh, pretty powerful in a couple of different settings. So thanks for the chance, look forward to talking. Absolutely, so, so Bill, and, uh, on that, so thank you all again for, for making the time to do this. So Bill, uh, why don't you jump into a little bit uh, exactly what it is that it does and, and uh, the different aspects of it so we can get a better view of, of how we're doing a lot of the stuff that you talked about. Okay, yeah, that's great. You know, uh, when the pandemic hit, uh, and, you know, it was early March uh, for me, I was traveling back from New York City from a business trip and, um, you know, we went into basically a national lockdown. And so, you know, there were a uh, a lot of interest in spinning up the security industry to uh, from webinars and and podcasts and Zoom calls to to start addressing you know how can we support um, you know the public and, and what's going on in the pandemic. So I was sitting back listening to uh, a bunch of these discussions and a lot of it was focused on really operational policies and procedures how we were going to social distance how we were going to keep ourselves uh, our hands clean you know things that are really necessary and important. But what I wasn't hearing was, uh, you know, there wasn't really a technical solution that was tying in to what a lot of uh, facilities were trying to do from an operational perspective. And so I went to uh, partners I have at Intel and HP Aruba, and I said, look, we, we should probably um, try to leverage existing technology to support safe reentry. 
right into public spaces. And what we did was we put together a solution that under the umbrella of precision contact tracing, we can do all of these really great things through Intel's computer vision and Aruba's uh, Bluetooth low energy tagging capabilities to support social distance monitoring, to support capacity uh, limit enforcement of spaces, uh, to do uh, wayfinding and um, people tracking, and um, also crowd intelligence and crowd density intelligence, PPE detection, all of the things that were coming at us to, in the market from individual companies as, as one solution. And so what we said was, let's, let's bring it to market under an umbrella of a package solution that can be an a la carte menu uh, for what facilities think they need to support uh, safe reentry. And, and this, is, this is how it all came together. So it was um, you know, a, a product of leveraging Intel computer vision, HPEs, Bluetooth low energy tracking, and then putting it all together under uh, the solution um, that we've um, started to actually socialize and pilot. We're actually going to pilot in a cultural institution uh, tomorrow. Um, so you know, there's some good, good uh, momentum on this. And then we'll get into the details. I think I'll pass it to Anna and Jeff to talk specifically, Anna about computer vision and Jeff about uh, BLE Aruba uh, tracking. Um, but that's, that's a good stage setter, I think, Lee. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, Anna and Jeff, you don't mind if you could jump into some of the, the tech, because we hear these terms, right? They're like bingo terms of computer vision and, and the BLE tracking and con contract. But if you could speak a little bit to exactly how does it work and what aspects and, and what you're using in this, that would be great. Yeah, of course. And, and Jeff, do you want to start off with the, uh, the BLE and how, how you're adapting the asset tracking solution? And then I can uh, right. uh, follow you up on the, right. on, on the use of computer vision. Yeah, yeah, I think that's good. We'll start kind of foundationally here with, um, with, with a, it's basically a technology that we have inside a Rubik called Meridian. And historically, this is what, it was a piece of software that would be integrated in mobile apps. And by placing little Bluetooth low energy transmitters throughout the venue, and those were typically about two inches by two inches square, you know, an inch or two deep. Um, and we put those in a fairly dense manner throughout the concourse of suites and, and as you come in. And then Meridian was a piece of software that, that lives inside a mobile app and it gives you your location services. So an example would be, you know, look down as you enter a venue and say, explore the venue it would bring up a map, a user-friendly map with a blue dot on there. And the blue dot would actually be coming from a calculation on your phone, but it was using software from Aruba. And then we could actually give you routes, you know, so you could say, take me to the local uh, you know, uh, pizzeria or the local bathroom. And Meridian will calculate where you are and then a pre-positioned route. So it's kind of important here. We would help guide the users to, to where we want them. So Meridian kind of takes on a whole new um, uh, dynamic here in the, in the, in the post-COVID world. The value of a mobile app with these location services is you know, get in the venue, get used to your seat, you know, in the way that we'd like. So maybe that's clockwise on the way in or counterclockwise on the way out. Um, and then uh, help you order food, you know, find the closest bathrooms, line bus, you know, so you're not standing in big queues anymore. And um, that system just, you know, it will have a new life in post-COVID just because of the amount of guidance we can offer public crowds. So within that system and, and used in a very specific way is another capability, which is using an active asset tag that was typically put on um, truly, and this is not made up, it was truly on ventilators and on very expensive pieces of equipment inside hospitals. So using... Bluetooth low energy, these tags now are transmitting constantly. And instead of your phone calculating the blue dot, Meridian in the cloud is actually calculating your blue dot. So if you go into a venue and you deploy an Aruba footprint of Wi-Fi access points, they actually have this other radio system in there. And now if you go into say a venue of uh, an arena or a stadium, we have a new experience, a new guest experience, which is as you come through the magnetometers, the venue will scan your ticket 
They'll know who you are as a person. And they will then have you open up a sanitary bag and put on a lanyard. And at the moment they do that, they will scan a little code off of the back of that bag. So it's, it's important to realize that's a very important DMARC because right there, the venue assumes control of personally identifiable information. In our system in Meridian, what starts to happen is that as that tag moves around, we log its position in the cloud. And so just imagine to us, it's anonymous tag. We don't know who that, that tag belongs to, but every second we're logging its X, Y positions on a map. Now, the, so that capability exists. It's a combination of us deploying enough of our, you know, our Wi-Fi access points or even small access points in just this mode. Just, just imagine the size of an outlet, a duplex outlet in your house. Those can become receivers to do just this tagging function. So then the question is, what are we going to do with the data? And I'll, I'll just going to kind of say we have two general um, pieces of feedback from the clients. One is they will run a real time kind of operational center, a guest experience center, something like that. So they're going to be looking for dashboards. And um, so we can give them kind of counts of people. We can tell them how many X, Y coordinates are coming within, you know, say one to two meters of each other. Um, and that'll be one use of it. Now, whether that's, you know, big knock like a security operations center or it's your new guest experience people in the, in the crowds with an iPad, you know, the idea there is there is one school of thought around what will we do with, you know, with this data near real time. And our system is not, you know, seconds. It's probably 30 seconds delayed to a minute, something like that. So the other, the more powerful function is to data mine that. So if after an event, a user by name reports to the venue that, oh, my, my, I got sick or somebody close to me got sick, the venue can go back against the data that's in our cloud and could say, okay, I know Jeff was assigned tag number 100, but let me go say to the database, what other tags came within one to two meters and were there for more than you can specify five, 10, 20, 30 seconds. And by doing that, you can see what we're gonna do is create encounter reports. And you as the venue operator will have the chance to, you know, use slider bars and kind of groom that data to say, you know, how close do you really want to report? It, 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 you know, as you get closer and closer, it gets to be more and more, you know, be more and more fine grained. And at the same time, what are you going to do with it? I mean, that's another whole conversation about um, are we going to send digital signage messages into the, the busy areas? You know, how, how are we going to use this data? But primarily, the thing that we're looking at is that ability to go back and just say who came in contact with for a certain amount of time. And so, what I, if you think about what I said, the guest experience started with this new step of putting a lanyard on and letting the venue associate you, you're kind of opting into this at that moment. You know, for the experience of being in this venue, you are opting in more or less. Um, and then there's a lot of different you know, ideas about branding those lanyards or do we return them like 3D goggles in the old uh, 3D movie days? Um, and all that I think will unfold. And, and I'll kind of close and just say, you know, that, 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 that the system I just described works on anywhere there's a perimeter, anywhere we can bring people through a funnel point and someone, probably not Aruba, we really don't want that personally identifiable information, right? It's very important to us not to have that. But you or, or your, your venue operators or your HR department, they will maintain that, you know, that correlation between the tag, you know, which can be permanently assigned, temporarily assigned, reassigned. So we have this idea that there'll always be sanitary, you know, coming through the venue and it'll be a, a you know, a touchless experience in one way. So that's a pretty good description of that system, Anna. Maybe you can layer on. Yeah, perfect. So like uh, like Jeff was just walking through, right? We we really wanted a way to leverage technology in a way that would be valuable to help the individuals at an event as well as the venues really know uh, know what was going on, if, uh, if social distancing was being followed or it wasn't being followed. Uh, but we also tried to do that in a way where there was a great deal of privacy or as much privacy as possible. Um, so implicit in everything that Jeff was just describing is to say, 
say this tracking is strictly at the event. Most of the tracking will be done anonymously uh, and only if there is cause for concern or data that says, hey, somebody really did have, uh, have an issue and now we want to make sure that we do due diligence and go back to say were other people affected, um, only then would you really need to like dip in and, and kind of match attack to a person. So, uh, so lots of ways to protect people's privacy and just do that in the context of the event. Um, we want to augment that with using computer vision. And computer vision, the way to think about it is uh, most events right now have a ton of CCTV. There's a, a lot of, of manual watching of what's happening on video cameras to, to just have a good situational awareness and to, and to understand what's happening within the venue. Uh, when you start moving into the realm of computer vision, what we're doing is applying video analytics to that video so that instead of having a person watch to say, do you have a crowd forming, we can develop an algorithm and have developed algorithms that allow us to say, are you starting to see a, high, you know, a, a crowd form, uh, what's happening? Uh, in that in in a, in a space and is that something that needs to be brought to the attention of you know security staff or of the venue so that they can take action um, again that is all very much anonymous because the way that we are developing that type of an algorithm has nothing to do with facial recognition nothing to do with identity it is really just looking to say uh, based on an analysis of this video are we seeing people that are less than uh, six foot spacing have less than six foot spacing between them are you starting to show uh, multiple people coming in at once right uh, and essentially having a crowd develop so so again it's a way to protect people's privacy uh, but still give the venue a good knowledge of what's actually happening um, so we'll we're looking at actually doing multiple algorithms so it's something like it's not just crowd detection we can do specifically around is it six foot spacing between be, between folks uh, we can do things like occupancy counting and line monitoring monitoring as well. Um, we can do one-way detection. So if your venue is really trying to enforce for, for single direction movement, again, for, uh, uh, for uh, controlling the, the venue and the, the experience of the venue, then we can say, hey, it looks like there's somebody who's not following the one-way directions. Uh, and then it's really up to the venue to make the decision on what do they want to do with that data. Um, there's kind of two main things that we think will happen with that. Uh, one is for the venues that are interested in doing some uh, taking some direct action during the uh, the actual event, then that data could be shared in near real time with the security staff, so they could go and talk to you know to address the the folks that are maybe not following the rules quite as diligently as they need to. Uh, but the other thing that we think is probably even more valuable of it than that is we can use that for after effect uh, after the fact analysis to say, do you need to look at tweaking maybe the location of a concession stand, or do you need to tweak how you've done your one-way traffic flows uh, in a way that addresses where you've got problems with uh, with too many people congregating, having crowds develop, and that sort of thing. Uh, so we can do some really nice heat maps that really give just a very good picture of where are people coming in, where are they spending time, where are there issues with flow, and things like that. Uh, and again, all very much only within the context of the venue, only uh, in a de-identified manner, so that uh, you can gain the situational awareness without having, um, you know, having the issues of, of maybe asking for too much information. Yeah, it's so. fascinating too. I mean, the, the, so a lot of these things, you know, they've been explored, if you would, or, or thought about, but it was really based off of like selling more beer and yes. making the experience <laughs> better before. So it was like a nice to have situation where people just wanted to make it high tech to where, you know, like the convenience side of this got sort of T-boned by the health side, which which then delivers, here's my dog, um, then delivers, so now you guys are basically seeing the entire family today. Um, have, have uh, you know, <laughs> it's awesome. Uh, T-boned it basically to where the health concerns now are gonna really move the adoption of the infrastructure, right, in place with a, with a use case that is delivering health, but then you have all of these sort of waterfall effects of opportunity that you talked about, like optimization, um, everything from just how it gets my head going of like 
you, you wonder sometimes like people did sort of like choke points probably in the way they built structures based off of that to be, um, you, you know, for, for fire reasons. Now it's the health side too. So it's going to shape the structure that of how places are built and utilized and what drives value in that. So it's very, very exciting. And what I like too is you've mentioned it a number of times, which I think is great is that you're cognizant of the use cases being built with privacy in mind. And you're not, it's not like a sacrifice. You're not saying like, oh, in order to do this, you have to give up to get, you You are actually building it with that in mind from the beginning. So it should make people a bit more comfortable, if you would, of interacting on, on things like this. So um, kudos to you all for doing that. I, pre I appreciate the the level of effort on that side. Now, a uh, question for you all, is there, is there a, a, a size of structure or facility to where this, you know, fits better? Like, is it, you know, if I'm an office building, can these things apply or do, does it need to have density or be size like a stadium? What are your views on that? So I'll, I'll start first and then Jeff, please jump in. You know, I, I don't think the, you know, I don't think the size, there's any limitation. This is really a very scalable solution. Um, we think that there are some areas within, uh, uh, within the space in question that will benefit more from say having the ability to do the computer vision, right? So obviously we'd never do computer visions in the bathroom, right? We wouldn't need to do that in offices. We wouldn't need to do that in, you know, uh, employee spaces, right? It would be much more about, you know, where do you really expect to see traffic? Where are you concerned? Where, uh, you know, uh, where can you really grab data in a way that's going to help you you know, protect your, your staff, protect your patrons, uh, and then use that information in a way that's really going to, uh, uh, you know, reduce the risk as much as possible. So, so that's really much more the, the limitation. Uh, the BLE, and again, this is where Jeff should jump in and he can, he can talk through that. Also super scalable, not super limited with respect to how many people that you can have, uh, you know, tagged at a time. Uh, so there's a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of opportunity to have this be, you know, small, going all the way to you know the the huge stadiums that we have today and, and I, I'd like to jump in real quickly I think we started with stadiums and arenas as you know this we can bring this to the public space and then uh, leave the bowls where the games are happening you know leave those uh, to the operational side of the house where people are seated social distanced already um, but really focus on the public concourses the restaurants the team stores the restroom areas the the concessions, um, but what we found is um, cultural institutions are very interested as well because they have a lot of open space museums um, are, are have been very interested. Um, higher ed, uh, student unions, those type of places have also been very interested in in the solution. But really, what what I wanted to touch on before I t pass to Jeff real quick is we're leveraging existing architectures, networks, and devices. So we're not trying to rebuild a, so we're not trying to put a new solution into a facility. So we're leveraging what's already existing, which is really great. Um, but we're also providing the venue, the venue has a duty of care responsibility to people that, that come to it. So we're, we're providing that duty of care through this technical solution. We're, we're also providing the venue with some safe harbor as well. Um, if something, you know, happens in the venue or there's a, uh, some sort of positive um, COVID because of an event, then we can actually go back and review the data. And so those are really, those are some other things that we, we really liked about it. And then also putting the, the onus of personal responsibility on the person, right? So this system we've talked about uh, where you can get alerts um, about violating social distance, or you could get an alert of, of um, you know, your, your object detection, your mask isn't on in a, in a public space, that could come to your personal cell phone, right? As an SMS text that says, um, look, you're, you're not social distancing. And so it's all built in where it's privacy, it's personal responsibility, it's duty of care, and then of course it's safe harbor for the facility. So Jeff, over to you. Yeah. <laughs> all summed it up pretty nicely from you know i'm a really technical guy so what i would say is in a in an existing enterprise or kind of carpeted space suite area and even even probably like the you know some of the smaller concourses and arenas we'll, we will deliver that one to two meter accuracy 
Um, in the bigger venues where we may have 100,000 people moving around in the concourse common area, we being Aruba, we would have to supplement and, and increase the radio density in the building first to get to the one to two meters of accuracy. But beyond that, um, we're, we're jumping in right away. The early adopters here are manufacturing warehouses and uh, processing plants. So we're just dropping a, smear, a few of these little, uh, we call them hospitality APs. They're literally for a dorm room or a hotel room. And we just need very little APs. We're not delivering Wi-Fi. We're actually listening for uh, Bluetooth tags. So it will scale all the way from the smallest of carpeted spaces right up to a 100,000 seat venue. Um, and I won't say there's not implications. I'm going to do other things to make those really state-of-the-art, you know, stadium networks still operate. We're going to use this spectrum differently, though. We won't use it for Wi-Fi like we, like we have in the United States. Yeah. So this is, I mean, it's, it's really exciting. I mean, this goes, reminds me back to the M2M days before, like, IoT. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, it's, no, but it's finally starting to somewhat be realized. It's, it's, it's just, it blows my mind. It takes, it takes a health up, a pandemic, right, to, yeah. to impact sort of a, the use case to, to what we all who have been working in it early, and you all, early on, of like, we, we know this is going to happen. It's just interesting to me to see what, what causes it, because then you now that you've got sort of that thread of it needs to be here for the health side, what can you build on top of it? And then also the utilization of a handful of things like current infrastructure that's already there that is serving some purpose, but then also gets repurposed for other things. It's like a classic sort of desire yeah. I think we all wanted from IoT, right? So now now we have that. Yeah. And then the sort of blending of all the different data sets and the, the different products and, and solutions and the rest into one that gives somewhat of a seamless uh, um, uh, use uh, I don't know, seamless experience for whoever the different stakeholders are, are there. And actually, I think, it, tell me if you agree or not, but like the other ones, there's like, there's like a real end user stakeholder added value of doing this. So that idea of opting in to go do this to make sure that when I, the trust that I have of this space, when I get there, I'm healthy. Um, you know, there's like, you know, whether somebody would care if they can get popcorn early or not, maybe, but now they like care about that stuff. So like, it's, it's really going to help, I think, drive the budgets being opened up to adopt technology like this, but then also the demand of having stuff like this. So that the places like you could think like, you know, it's no longer going to be just like, you know, they had really good hot dogs and that's why I like that stadium. It's like, that's a healthy place I can go to. I don't have to worry about, it. I have trust. So I'm going to go there. Yeah. Um, that's, that's like, deep, deep inside stuff of added value that IoT is doing. So yeah, it's cool stuff. I really appreciate the Thank work you. that you're doing. I, I know a half hour of conversation can't do any of this service, <laughs> but the main goal here was to sort of just spark a conversation, show people that are, are really working on solving these really, really, really complex problems, but important ones are like the cultural aspects of, 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 of society, right? These are societal problems and you're applying technology, which is fascinating and very cool. Um, so if I wanted to find out more information, where's the best place for me to do that? So for uh, more information, um, just contact Bill Edwards. Wonderful. All right, so Bill, Anna, Jeffrey, I really appreciate you all taking the time to do this. Very fascinating stuff. I look forward to seeing, I know you said you're, you're rolling one out. Maybe we could touch base like, you know, three months, six months from now and, and really see how it works. And hopefully soon we can all go to a facility and actually see it and play. That would Absolutely. be really nice. <laughs> yeah, That's so great. Thank you, Lee. I've never wanted to go outside so bad, but uh, uh, no. <laughs> thank you all very much for taking the time and, and, Thanks and for having it's me. awesome yeah. to see the work that you're doing. So thank you. But much appreciated, Lee. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Our pleasure.